Joy 99.7 FM. Well, tonight, good evening and welcome to Top Star here on Joy 99.7 FM. Tonight, apply draconian sanctions against any political party that goes to court over election results if their petition is baseless. That's the proposal of former EC chairperson Kwajo Afarijan. To prevent the rush to court with improbable election petitions from becoming a fashion, I suggest that election petitions that do not succeed should attract punitive sanctions. Now, as Ghana prepares for the crucial presidential and parliamentary elections in December 2024, he is cautioning the EC against foisting its decisions on political parties, insisting consensus must be built at IPAC first. The reason is that it is not good practice to foist changes in electoral practices on important stakeholders like political parties. Well, that is how, what we're looking at on the uh, top story here on Joy 99.7. Well, tonight, former EC chairperson Kwajo Afarijan talks tough ahead of the 2024 elections as he asks the court to apply hard-hitting sanctions against any political party that will head to court with a frivolous petition on electoral results. The Supreme Court in the country's political history has rejected two electoral petitions brought before it by the two major political parties seeking to challenge the integrity of the presidential polls in 2012 and the 2020 general elections. Speaking at a public lecture to commemorate Constitution Day on Monday, the former EC boss said it is long overdue for the courts to discourage the creeping culture of using the legal system to hold the electorate to ransom. As in all human endeavors, mistakes occur in elections. But genuine election mistakes can readily be discovered and corrected, not so deliberate wrongdoing. To deter deliberate wrongdoing, all persons connected with the conduct of elections must be held strictly accountable for their actions by instituting a stringent regime of punishment for willful wrongdoing. All categories of election workers must be familiarized with the applicable regime of sanctions during their training and any infractions must be seen to be punished. It appears that some candidates rush to court with election petitions alleging manipulation of results primarily to placate their financiers and supporters so that they will be given another chance to be a candidate the next time. The rush can cause undeserved injury to the reputation of the Electoral Commission and unnecessarily in unnecessary inundation of the courts. As we speak, there are well over 1,000 election petitions before the courts in Nigeria. To prevent the rush to court with improbable election petitions from becoming a fashion, I suggest that election petitions that do not succeed should attract punitive sanctions. Uh, He also cautioned the EC against imposing changes in the electoral system on political parties, insisting it's a recipe for confusion. The Electoral Commission must view the Inter-Party Advisory Committee, IPAC, as a convenient forum for discussing changes to our electoral practices. Irrespective of whether the intended change originates from the Commission all the parties. The reason is that it is not good practice to foist changes in electoral practices on important stakeholders like political parties. It is prudent to discuss any intended changes thoroughly at IPAC meetings with a view to achieving consensus. 
If consensus is achieved, the IPAC then becomes a convenient vehicle for disseminating the changes to the electorate. Though what Mr. Afrajan proposes comes across as controversial, it seems to be gaining strong backing from two former attorney generals who are endorsing harsh sanctions against advocates of baseless electoral petitions. Take a listen to Joe Gatti and Marietta Brewer Pelpon. People who don't have any basis for bringing election petitions must be punished. Three of us agreed. We all said without exception that such people must be mortared in what is called heavy and punitive costs. If you have no basis for bringing a letter petition, don't bring it. I added that such a person is a threat to democracy. It's undermining democracy. I understand that they do it to keep their food soldiers happy. I understand that they do it so that they continue getting financed. Such a person should be banned for taking part in elections for a period. You are not fit to be a public officer. If it is frivolous, you go to court on a frivolous claim. I think that for every case, not just election-related um, disputes, there should be punitive okay. costs. But, I mean, if it's not and there is merit in the case, why should you be mocked in heavy costs or, or, or damages or whatever? All right. And top story, as always, is brought to you by Vodafone. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. Let, let's go on the phone lines now and speak to Chairman of the Constitutional and Legal Affairs Committee of the MPP, Frank Davis. And um, uh, but good evening to you, sir. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, and good evening to your esteemed listeners. Great. Thank you. Uh, we, we also have on the line the Director of Legal uh, of the NDC, Edu J. Tamaklo. Good evening to you, sir, and thanks for joining us, too. Good evening. Now, now uh, let me start with you, Lawyer Frank Davis, and, and both of you are lawyers. How can a party know that it doesn't have a case? If I want to go to court, how can I tell that, well, I don't have a case? Well, well Lawyer Davis, I want to start from you. Uh, okay, thank you very much. And uh, let, me, let me put this whole thing in context. Yes, I, I, I can agree with what Commissioner... Uh, for young set, but don't let's mix oranges with apples, all right? If you take the two petitions so far presented in our courts, the 2013 electoral presidential electoral petition and the 2020 presidential election petition, 2013, of course, everybody knows was mounted by the MPP. And the 2020 petition was mounted by the NDC, especially in the presence of former President Mahama and His Excellency the President of the Republic. Now, let's put the two petitions in sharp contrast. When you look at the determination of the court in the 2013 election petition, you realize that the court was split in the middle. It was a 5 4 decision. Obviously, telling everyone in this world, whole our world, that there was merit. There was enough merit in the petition which was brought before the Supreme Court. Otherwise, the judges will not arrive at a 5 4 decision. Okay? Now, let's, let's, let's weigh that against what was mounted in 2020. The results was a unanimous seven. Then the court was clear in his mind that that petition had no merit at all. And whoever is on which side can interpret it any way that he or she likes. But the truth of the matter is that the Supreme Court came to a firm determination that there was no merit in that petition. Now, what did the petitioners bring to court in that petition, Mama? What did they mount? In the course of the trial, when they were asked by two of the Supreme Court justices to bring the collection of their results, what they had gathered from all the polling, from all the polling stations across the country where they had agents and representatives, 
have they collected their results to challenge what the electoral commission had pronounced they said no but they didn't come to court for that but they came to court because of the declaration of the results that they came to court because the electoral commissioner at one time said a and another time said b <laughs> there, 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 there was nothing that they brought to the court to challenge the result. Yes, if if the Commissioner Faridan is saying that in such petitions, the petitioner should be mocked in every single court, yes, I agree with him. But you you can't you can't put all the two together. That the mere fact that the petition has been mounted means that the person should be mounted in court. You look at the determination at the end of the day. It was clear to any of your person in this country. Well, that well that but, but, but the argument is about someone going to court with, with without a case, or, or to, to use their words, a frivolous case. And well, I want no, to understand... It's, it's obvious how, to everyone that the NDC at the time went to court without a case. Now, let me tell you what happened subsequently. It is common knowledge that when Chairman Asiedun Petia was contesting the last chairmanship race with Samuel uh, Ofuzambo. Why did you go and tell the supporters? Why did you go and tell the NDP sympathizers? He exposed them. He said to them that he knew that when they were going to go, there was no merit in the case. And that they should go and ask Samuel Ofuzambo who was the chairman at then. But then when they were going to go, they knew they had no case to contest because they had no results. This was the whole chairman of the NDP saying this publicly. He thought he was saying it in camera, but it came out. And nobody has come out to deny it. He has said to tell himself, has not come out to be nice. So you realize that from the get-go, they knew they had no case. But they went to court just to waste the whole country's time and to keep their supporters waiting. Well, this, well, well, if you say they should be mounted in heavy opinion, because I agree with you. Because that petition was as baseless as it was on the materials. Well, let, let, me br- let me bring in Eduji Tamaklo, who was, was, was part of that particular team. Eduji, so the argument is that you presented a case in court, a case that you knew from the get-go that you didn't, you wouldn't win, you didn't have a strong case. Was that the case? Okay, so once again, um, I just want to say um, it's regrettable the understanding of how frivolous a case is on the basis that one ended 4-5 and the other ended 7-0. That particular understanding is regrettable because, with respect, you can have seven judges, okay, thinking alike, but in a very regrettable manner. At least it has become a matter of public disdain and scorn. In fact, today, what is often used is the unanimous FC. Why do you think Ghanaians? from which justice emanates from. Consider what happened in the 2020 election petition and now describes the court as a unanimous FC. That alone should tell that it did not sit well with the public. It can also be a contrived narrative to achieve the kind of conversation by Sia and David is putting out. That simply because in the election petition brought by H. E. John Dramani Mahama, there was a unanimous decision. It means that it was frivolous. How can you even reason this way? And simply, and because the petition brought by Mr. Akufuado in 2012 resulted in a four-time decision, it means that it was with merit. I mean, how do you even judge case on the basis of this? Right. Well, so, well, 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 so, 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 Eddie, before, before, before you, Eddie, let me ask, let me ask you this question. Before you went to court on that case, what are the items, or I mean, the things you had gathered to convince you, the team, that in fact you had a watertight case that could cause the Supreme Court to overturn this election in your favor? Tell you something. Presidential elections are fought on two legs. First, the constitutional requirement, the constitutionality of the election itself. 
and the numbers did. So if you have a situation where in the 2020 election, it has to take a lot of legal gymnastics to prevent the chairperson of the electoral commission from testifying. That the law should tell you. He, Frank David, should remember that during the election process, he whispered into the ears of the late senior Akutuan Park. He didn't know that the mic was on. Only four. Mr. Akutuan Park, and the, and, the, and the video is there. Only four. The respected late Yao uh, Akutuan Park to tell him that no, he can't use the election the EC figures because the form 13 that Madame de Mensa prepared was problematic. He is aware. Why was the spirit attempt at not getting Madame de Mensa testifying in the Supreme Court? Look, because you see, electoral justice is also a question of the truthfulness of the election. If they knew that. Her declaration of Mr. Akufuado was without fault. That was even the more reason why she ought to have come before the Supreme Court, like Caesar's wife, to speak to the genuineness of the work that she has done. Just suppose that, if you recall, in the 2012 election petition, when an application was brought for discovery, production of certain documents, right? And the electoral commission resisted that application for, go and read the reasoning of the then chief justice, uh, then Supreme Court judge, his lordship justice in Yeboah, relative to the conduct of the electoral commission in resisting the application for production of documents, not testifying no, just the production of documents. So please, look, the respected Kwejo Afarijan had raised a very important issue that we all need to consider. Whether in an election petition, where the petitioner loses, the petitioner should suffer damages or costs if he loses. It is a decision that we need to make. Remember that there is a reason, there is a policy rationale why election petitions, particularly presidential elections, are exclusively reserved for the Supreme Court of Ghana. It's like original actions. There is a reason. Because if you begin to punish petitioners who appear before the Supreme Court, particularly on presidential elections, you are basically discouraging them to use the judicial process. Don't use the streets. And the benefit will not be to Ghanaians. The benefit will not be to Ghanaians. And that is why you will even notice that when you bring an action, an original action, at the Supreme Court, cause is not taken against you. Because the Constitution itself is founded on the premises that Ghanaians should be encouraged to defend the Constitution itself. If I have reason. So in effect, in effect, you support the proposal by Dr. Farijan that yes, some sort of punitive measures should be placed on people who come to court with cases that are not really watertight enough because after all, it takes it spends all of us the times of all of us, and then we we are all headed in a way that in the end won't be to the benefit of all of us. No, I disagree with the the, the policy proposal by him. And my disagreement is that if, if you are using costs to discourage people from approaching the court, when they have reasons to believe that they have been cheated in a presidential election, they will resort to the streets. Now do a cost-benefit analysis of going on the streets and using the judicial process. I would always prefer the judicial process. So on this note, I want to disagree with a respected professor, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Professor or Dr. 
Afarijan. I call him professor because he's been lecturing for a long time at the political science department. So on this note, I want mm. to disagree with him. We should not mm. joke or toil mm. with electoral justice at all. Okay. L l let me bring in Laura Davis here. Laura, don't you think that if this measure is ever implemented, it will gag people from seeking redress for issues they deem demands the intervention of the courts? Uh, but let me, uh, before I respond, let me, let me, let me tell my very good friend, my learned friend, that it does not pay to use inelegant and in non-decorous language when we are addressing each other as friends. You should exhibit the greatest scandal when we are dealing with such matters. Because if, if he descends into that victory, I have better mastery than he has. And we are talking to Ghani. So the language should be civil. The this business of trying to use to, to use rather untidy language as lawyers, it's, it's not proper. Then when you see me somewhere else, you talk to me. What does you understand by regrettable? Listen to me. The fact that who which which people constitute Ghanaian. The fact that they their stock, the NDC, refers to the judgment of the Supreme Court as a unanimous FC judgment. It means all Ghanaians whole sway. Is that his reasoning which he doesn't find regrettable, but he finds not regrettable. That because him and his and, and his fellow president and, and people like him refer to the judgment of the Supreme Court as a unanimous FC judgment, it means that all Ghanaians refer to this attack. This is his level of reasoning, and he calls my regrettable. Now you are a partisan lawyer, you are a partisan lawyer of the Supreme Court, did you? Young as you are, you're growing, but you are a partisan lawyer of the Supreme Court. You come to sit on radio and say that the judgment was contrived. This is what you want to practice and portray as a lawyer. And yet you go back to the same Supreme Court. So that in the 2013 election, when the NDC won, when the petition was dismissed, it was also contrived. Come on, you see, they should stop these things. We, we are, we are, we are defaming people in this country now. When the petition that, that that was mounted by Akufuado. That's five for decision. He wants to say, but his logic and common sense and reason, that judgment was also contrived. I'm sorry. You see, Eduji, don't say things that will put you in trouble. You are saying that in that petition, I whispered something to Akutampa, and I, I didn't know that my my mic was on. Akutampa is dead. Let him rest in peace. I will not comment any further, but be careful. You are my friend. Be very careful. When you say things publicly to the hearing of every Ghanaian, and you sully my name in such a manner, I, every, I'm just saying this to you on radio, that I take you, I consider you as my what? younger brother and a friend. What? This, what? This from this. I what? never say okay. it anywhere again. Now, okay. let me tell you something. Yeah. Let, let me tell, excuse, uh -huh. me, excuse me. Let me ask you, when, when you were talking, I was quiet. Mm -hmm. Now, if three former judges, three former attorney generals, I wouldn't say their, their reasoning is impervious, but if three former attorney generals, including the attorney general of his own government, at the forum, have agreed that the the, 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 the the proposal being put forward by Afaridan is something we should be considered. He can disagree with it. I agree with the uh, he calls him the professor. I agree with the commissioner of Afaridan. Because you wear every case according to the materials which are brought before you. Now, if a matter goes to the Supreme Court, yes, it is to test the spirit of the constitution. But there are cases which go to the Supreme Court. We are all political lawyers. We are all particular to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court finds it very difficult to award costs in, in cases which are bothered because it is to test the constitution. But you can realize, even from their demeanor, that they are paying not to award costs in certain constitutional matters because it ends up at, at, at the end of the day that the whole cost time has been wasted. Now, how more, how more reasonable can be in the fact that a case which is taken to court Nine justices of the Supreme Court, five have agreed, four have disagreed. That is five four. Seven justices of the Supreme Court, seven have all agreed that it is no. You call that contrite. I leave it to his own peace of mind and his judgment. But I agree with the Leonard uh, 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 Commissioner that cases 
there are so many electoral petitions, mm. not the presidential, the parliamentary ones. You realize that most of them are not. The petitioners know that their cases have no merit. But because they want to keep their guys who supported standing and portraying to them that they won the election, but they were cheated by the electoral commission, and they end up going because at the end of the day, they must have dismissed. Mm. But, but, so but, 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 but since you're a lawyer, you believe in the rule of law. Won't you be guarding people from, from going to court if you bring such a measure that if, if, if you don't win the case, some sort of punitive uh, measure must be instituted against you? Listen to me, I, I, I am a legal practitioner and I believe in the rule of the law. But mm. when a client comes to me and gives me a brief, I, the lawyer, should be able to tell the client that this brief is a bad one. That is what differentiates us. So, so as well from the other. If a client brings a brief to me, and as a trained lawyer, I know there are no merit in that brief, I'll tell the client to go and uh, uh, consult another lawyer. Because if there's not any case at all that comes to you, that should visit the courtroom. That's a simple answer to you. If you can, do this, from, if uh, you can do this for me, the in a rule of the law mm. uh, and guarding anybody. No. Mm. My conscience as a lawyer should tell me that the case is a bad one. Okay. Now, the, the former chairperson is asking the EC not to first or first diet uh, decision on the party. He should look for consensus. The NDC has been talking about the indelible ink. Isn't this a good call that the EC must listen to to look look at building consensus rather than you know ordering that well this is what I want to do? I I can't give you a yes or no answer because I don't attend IPAC meetings and I can't understand the rationale and the reasoning behind the EC taking such a decision. I think they'll be the best people to answer. I cannot speak for the EC. I have not attended any IPAC meeting ever before in my life. Maybe ABG has you can explain. But I don't know why the EC is insisting that no indelible mark should be used. Maybe they have good enough reason for doing that. I cannot speak to that. I'm sorry. Uh, Edgy, you, your party says that you disagree with the removal of the indelible ink. Now, the former chairperson is calling for consensus. This will happen at IPAC. Your party says you are going back to IPAC. Is this something that you are following through or something else has come up? Okay, so there are two things that we should recognize. That from 1992, our elections have had the benefit of the use of the indelible man, the ink. Now, if you look at the constitutional instrument, that is the Public Elections Regulations 2020, CI-127, made on the 2nd of July, 2020, it is stated clearly in Regulation 33.2c, that a permanent mark, as much as possible, be made on a will-be voter. The reasoning is this. Whereas it is expected that a biometric voter registration system should have an internal mechanism of detecting multiple voters, we do know that because of the limitations of Article 42, of the 1992 constitution which places only three requirements or limitations on a will-be voter that is a Ghanaian 18 years of age sound mind the question of biometric verification is not provided for in article 42 so ci 127 in regulation 32 provides for manual verification now when you manually verify a will be voter. What mechanism is there to ensure that the person will go and come back? And that is when the issue of the indelible ache becomes very clear. So our party has made it very clear that we are diametrically opposed to any notion of allowing that. Now, may I quickly, quickly respond to some concerns raised by my learned senior? You see, he started this conversation by drawing parallel, by saying that because the 2012 election petition resulted in 4-2, it means that they presented a better case. And that because one resulted in 7 0, it means that it was a frivolous case. Well, well, and I'm you... saying that I disagree. Okay, that, 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 that's fine, but, but I wanted to find out from you. I wanted to find out from you. You are no, allowing I... him mm -hmm. to make this point. Please, please. please. No, no, no. If you, you know, know. 
No, no, no. You made your point and he also made his. I want to find out from you. Now that the former chairperson is calling for consensus, are you going to follow through with your decision to return to IPAC or not? Can you repeat your question? I'm asking whether you would go to IPAC or you wouldn't. Going to IPAC depends on the portion of the chairperson of the Electoral Commission. The chairperson of the Electoral Commission has made it abundantly clear that as far as she is concerned, the office that she chairs enjoys constitutional independence, be it functional and operational. And that as far as she is concerned, decisions at IPAC are not binding on her. If that remains her position, that IPAC decisions are not binding on her because she enjoys a certain functional or operational independence. Then the fact is, why would you waste your time going to an advisory body, IPAC, only for the electoral commission to say, I enjoy independence. I will do what pleases me. No. So the point should be made very clear. We are building a democracy based on consensus. We would want a situation where the chairperson of the electoral commission will go back to her IEA days when she needs to encourage dialogue consensus building. Having been touched by Akufuado and Baumia administration, she had basically changed from her IEA days. That we have an issue with. Okay. All right. Grateful to you for joining us. So that was lawyer Eduji Tamaklo, he's writer of legal of the NDC. Earlier you had the chairman of the Constitutional Legal Committee of the MPP, Frank Davis. And that's it for Top Story. Um, up next is uh, Newsnight.